variable or an index radical equation here with a variable index. Now by the natural numbers, I do mean uh, just the set of numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, forever and ever, ad infinitum. Okay, like that. And notice we do have a variable index here and a variable power. Okay. Uh, so we're looking for a single solution here. Now, this, these properties of rational exponents, relating them back to radical notation is quite useful right here. And that's what I've done on this very first statement here. Uh, this, the x minus 5 would be behaving like the m in this expression. And of course, x minus 4 is, is, is the, is the uh, n. Okay? And so we can write it this way, which turns out to be quite useful, as I'll try to illustrate here. Uh, now, right here we can write this rewrite this in a way where we can take advantage of the same basis try to get a same base scenario right here and so we can re-express this as the cubed roots okay now what i'm going to do it turns out to be useful i'm going to bring the four inside here but we have to make it four cubed okay four cubed uh, times 9. Okay. Again, cubing and cube rooting are inverse operations. Now, if you continue right here, folks, this is 64 times 9, which is 576. So I'll skip that arithmetic step here. So we'll end up with equals to the cube root of 576. But a lot of you will probably recognize 576 as a perfect square. It's equal to 24 squared, which is very good news. Okay, so this is equal to the cube root, the cube root of 24 squared. Okay, now you, you already you can see how nice this is going to work out because based on this relationship between radical notation and fractional exponent notation, we can rewrite this as 24 raised to the two-thirds. See, and really this is most of the work right here, just establishing this. It's not that hard. It's just something you kind of look for when you're working a problem like this, okay? But notice that um, what we have right here is this nice connection. All of this all the way down, we got a string of equalities right here. See this exponent right here, this fractional exponent has to equal this fractional exponent. The exponential function is a one-to-one -one function so you can equate the exponents right here and so the rest of it's just going to be doing the arithmetic associated with equating these exponents and so that ends up being x minus 5 over x minus 4 uh, equals to two-thirds and of course, when two fractions are equal to each other, uh, you can cross multiply. That's just a property of arithmetic. Get a little space here. Okay, so, so this is equal to two thirds. And so folks, this happens only if you cross multiply, right? That's just a property of fractions. So we get uh, 3x minus 15 and again y'all that's by cross multiplying 3 times x minus 5 and then uh, the next step is to multiply 2 times x minus 4 and that would result in 2x uh, minus 8 
But folks, if you subtract x and add 15 to both sides, you end up with x equals 7. Which is the solution, folks. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that one. I liked it a lot. Thanks for viewing.